Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of the Playsum Game Show that we're calling the TGS 2022 Preview. So, as you may know,、um, this year's Tokyo Game Show will be starting tomorrow, and、um, it will be open to the public from 2 p.m. JST on the 16th and all day on the 17th and 18th. So, Playsum will be having a booth at this year's event, and、um, so we're going to tell you a lot more about that today. And、um, we've also got some very exciting sales and discount news to tell you, so please stick to the end. Yep, and、um, we've got our MC for today, which is Ms. Chiaki Matsuzawa, and、um, we've got、um, Mr. Shunji Mizutani from Playsum, aka My Boss. And we've got social media personality and streamer Yamien. Very happy to be here. Yeah, and we've got our favorite、uh, puppet and streamer Kidding. Yep, so I'm back again. I'm very, very happy to be here too. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so that's our four man panel for today. <laughs> yes,、yeah, so apparently this is、um, Yamien and、um, Kirin's first time meeting each other. Yep,、uh, we've got some big news before getting into the show. Yes,、yeah, so the number of Playsum titles,、um, Playsum published titles sold. Has officially exceeded 10 million units worldwide. Congratulations to Playsum.、Uh, we're, we're not sure like, whether it's actually that big of an achievement, but yeah, we're ha very happy to reach this milestone. Yeah, and this,、um, this 10, million, 10 million figure、um, it excludes、uh, titles that were on subscription services such as the Microsoft Game Pass and PS Plus. Thank you all for your support. And to commemorate the,、um, this milestone, we will be having a very special giveaway during the show. Yeah, all you have to do is jump on Twitter,、um, tweet about the Playsum Game Show or a Playsum title before the end of the show with the competition hashtag. Playsum underscore ten m, so that's hashtag Playsum underscore one zero m. For our Western viewers,、um, three of you will stand a chance to win a pack of over twenty North American Switch game codes. So, yep, get get tweeting before the end of the show. Oh, looks like Yam Yen Sang is、um, interested in actually participating in the giveaway as well. And just to let you know that、um, for our Western viewers, the prize will be a pack of over 20 North American Switch game codes.、Um, the prizes actually differ between regions. So what you are seeing on screen at the moment is the、uh, prize. For residents that are in Japan. Oh, looks like、um, Kirin has actually played all of the games that、um, that was just so just shown on screen there. <laughs> yep, he's enjoyed all of them as well. So yeah, if anything looks、um, interesting to you, definitely check it out. Yeah, Yamien is、um, quite interested in Idol Manager. Looks、um, looks really fun. And Miss、um, Chiaki is、um, very interested in Tasomachi Twilight. 
そして本番組ニコニコ生放送でも放送中です。And um, the Japanese broadcast will also be on ニコニコ and、um, there's another giveaway campaign there as well. But please note that this,、um, this campaign is only for those of you who are currently residing in Japan. Yeah, simply follow、um, the, the official ニコニコゲーム account at ニコゲーム underscore PR and retweet the campaign tweet. Yeah, so in today's show, we'll be introducing Playzum's full TGS 2022 lineup. And we're going to tell you more about the Playzum booth as well. And、um, we've got some sales and discount info as well. 本日はブースで使用が可能なタイトル9つお届けしてまいります。Playzum will be having a total of nine titles、um, being showcased at their booth at this year's TGS. So here we go. Yeah, first up we've got a title called Marfusha. So, this is a game by a Japanese solo developer called Hinyari 9. It's a high tempo shooting game where you play as a girl named Marfusha. You're tasked with、um, protecting her nation in a fictional dystopian world. Yeah, and、um, the game progresses in days. Each day you fight against、um, enemy waves that get stronger and stronger as the days go past. And at the end of the day, you get paid a salary, which you also have to pay tax on. And whatever's left over, you can use to upgrade your character, upgrade your weapon, or even hire mercenaries for like, some extra help. Yeah, so、um, the, more, the higher your salary gets,、um, actually, the more tax you'll have to pay as well. So you'll have to think about how to spend that money wisely.、So、yeah, it's a short game, but、um, we've got multiple endings that change s depending on various factors. So it's got great replayability. So, we're bringing it to the Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, and Xbox One. It also runs on the X,、uh, Xbox Series S and X. The Steam version is currently available. Yeah, so one playthrough is probably around an hour. So,、um, yeah, so you have to keep playing through in different styles to try to unlock every ending there is. So apparently, all of the endings are kind of sad, but、um, without spoiling anything, we'll, we'll leave it up to you to unlock them, to unlock them yourselves. <laughs> So apparently, Kirin's already beaten the game before. <laughs> yeah, that, this genre is something that Kirin really enjoys, so he's, he's already on it. So, yeah, if you can see in Kirin's hand, he's holding something. Yeah, so we, we're going to have the Switch demo at our TGS booth. So, yeah, if you come by and try out the demo, and we've got this custom designed calorie mate nutritional energy bar for you as a present. 
ちらは<笑>紹介してるだけで面白いのずるいですね<笑><笑>こちらは本当に美味しいんでしょうかはいこ,はこちらは、はい、中身はカロリーメイトなんですけどあ好きです<笑> Yeah, so basically it's a calorie mate、um, energy bar wrapped in a custom designed、uh, wrapper that's、um, inspired by the game に出てくるすごい安っぽい安っぽいカロリーメイトがごめんなさいね。うんうん、あの,いえいえいえ<笑>あの国民食がある。いや、sometimes in the games、uh,、in the game マルフシア eats something like rations and something like energy bars, which is、um, what gave us the inspiration for this gift。はい、そうちょうどいいですね。配給を受け取りに配給を受け取りにあのうちのブースに並んでいただくと。So、yeah, so if this interests you and、um, if the game interests you, definitely visit our booth during TGS. Let's also hear from the developer. Hello, I'm Hinyari9, an illustrator and independent game developer. I love cold, inorganic, and decadent settings, and I created this game thinking that the world needs more content in this style. I'm working hard to make the game experience compact and light so that players who are busy can, can also enjoy it at their own pace. It's short, but it's packed to the brim with features that I love, and I hope you'll pick it up if you're interested. Yeah, so a lot of people are very busy nowadays, so more and more people are appreciating short games. So that's all from our future. And next up, we've got this title. Now, this is a title called Rusted Moss. Yeah, so, this is a Metroidvania that's developed by a three man team. Basically, it's an action game with a unique grappling system. Yeah, like it allows you to dangle from a wire, swing sideways, to jump further, or you can even like hook onto something while you're falling to make an even bigger jump. Yeah, so that, like,、um, if you think there's like an area that you're struggling to reach, you know, that's when the grappling hook comes in. And you can definitely get creative with、um, how you use it to get to different areas of the game. Yeah, the controls are tricky at first, but once you get used to it, you'll definitely be having a lot of fun swinging around and shooting enemies up. So, this will be coming to you, coming to Steam in 2023, currently、uh, slated for February. So, yeah,、um, jump on the Steam page, put it on your wish list, and、um, stay tuned for more news. Yeah, so with the grappling hook,、um, it seems like it's going to be a really fun title for streamers to stream. And also, like, it seems like the main character, when she shoots, like, there's some blowback. So that's, there's some realism for you as well. So when Mizutani first saw this、um, game, it reminded him of、um, Umihara Kawase, for those of you who know. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're a fan of Umihara Kawase, definitely check this one out. I think you'll like it. 
Yeah, so it took、um, Mizutani about 10 tries to actually get used to the controls, and once you get used to it and you clear a stage, like the satisfaction levels are just through the roof. Yeah, and we've got a demo at our TGS booth, so come get a, get a feel of the controls for yourself. Yeah, so there's also a challenge mode. So for people who clear the challenge mode, you'll see you'll get that special pin badge that Kirin's holding up at the moment. Yeah, so it's a, it's sort of like a pin badge with a chain on it. So that's sort of inspired by the grapple, the grapple and hook feature in the game. Yep. So we'll we'll be waiting for you at the booth. And let's hear from the developers. Hello, everyone. This is Fax Doc, Happy Squared, and Sunny Days, developers of Rusted Moss. We're an all-female team from Norway and Singapore, and we started doing game jams. And this is our largest project so far. Rusted Moss is a post-apocalyptic fairy tale inspired by Nordic and English folk tales. It has a pretty interesting grappling hook mechanic with high action gunplay, so we really hope people enjoy adventuring in our game and facing its challenges. Yeah, Nordic and English folk tales. That seems to be a very interesting combination and theme. Yeah. So basically, like the like human society is pretty much near the end, and like the game takes place in a world that's、um, very rusted and full of moss, thus rusted moss. And it's basically what society is like after humans. Yeah. So. If, That amazing piece of、um, artwork that you saw at the beginning of the section,、uh, of the segment, sorry.、Um, so that's a key art drawn by a Japanese illustrator called Akima. Yeah, we're really happy to have him、um, draw the draw the key art for this game because, like, looking at some of his previous work, like, it just felt like it just felt perfect for this game. And as expected, he basically encapsulated. Everything about the game in his piece of art, artwork. And up next. Yep, and this is Dragonoka. Yeah, this is a game by a developer called Gese Unka, who has also developed a free game called Meguru Meguru. And apparently, this free game has a cult following, so some of you might know it. Yeah, so basically, it's a city builder with a bit of a twist, in that you build a town, you live on the back of a moving dragon, and you build your town on the back of that moving dragon. Yeah, so like um that 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 explains what we just saw in the trailer just then. 
Yeah, and we've announced, we've already announced the localized Steam version as well, and、um, we're now also bringing it to the Nintendo Switch as well. Yeah, with the help of our part,、uh, our porting partners as Escadora. Yeah, so Escadora, they have a lot of experience porting like other Wolf RPG editor games, which is the engine used for this game, such as Lai, Mad Father, and One Way Heroics as well. So that's why、um, we enlisted their help to help bring this game to the Switch, the Switch system as well. Yeah, so in the game itself, like there are a lot of different materials in the game, like a lot of different types of materials in the game. So it actually is like、um, it ha- it puts quite a quite a burden on your PC more than you might expect, which is、um, what we were kind of worried about when we were porting it to the Switch. But、um, thankfully, everything's going going、uh, fine at the moment. Yeah. So if、um, if you were looking to play it on PC but you didn't have a strong enough PC, well, this is your chance. And let's hear from the develop the developers. I'm Cole, the drag the creator of Dragonoka. I'll be showcasing the demo of the pastoral slow life game Dragonoka at TGS. I'm very happy to be participating in TGS, which is my dream event. Acrylic key holders will also be given out at the event too, so definitely stop by and try out the game. Yeah, so we see. Yep, that's the key holder, the keychain rather that we're going to be giving away at the event. So it's a dogeza key holder, which is ah、uh, well, basically dogeza is the Japanese term of、uh, getting on all fours and、um, apologizing, basically. <laughs> yeah, if you definitely if you try out the game for yourself,、um, that's actually a scene that you'll come across quite frequently in the game. <laughs> And it's not just I'm、um, apologizing as well. Like when people do you a big favor, it also has like、um, thanks included in it. And moving on to our next title, let's have a look. So up next, up next we have a title called Signalis, and there you see on screen we've got the physical Switch and PlayStation 4 versions. And if you get, if you order them from us,、um, you'll get this beautiful double-sided poster. And apart from that, we've also got a character sticker sheet for you. So each character shown on there is a separate sticker. So that's a total of 12 stickers for you. Yeah, so that's、um, each character is、um, its own individual sticker. 
And we've also got a very slick metallic badge for you as well. So if you pre-order the、um, physical version from us,、um, you'll be, yeah, you'll get the, these three very amazing items. So this is a game that has been、um, developed by、uh, a team of、um, German developers called Rose Engine. It's basically a tribute and a love letter to、um, the classic survival horror games,、um, which is、um, very cool indeed. Yeah, you'll battle horrific enemies throughout the game, and then there are also puzzles for you to solve as well as you try to uncover the truth behind what's happening to the planet that you find yourself in. Yeah. So as you can see, like throughout the trailer and also throughout the game, like it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful, beautiful title. Also, Yamian actually saw the Steam page first when it opened up about two years ago. And yeah, the moment he laid eyes on it, like his interest levels were just like super high. And he's, yeah, he's been waiting for news forever, and like super stoked, super stoked to know that、um, it's coming soon. Yep. So this title will be going on sale on the 27th of October. So note that date down. And as with all the other titles before,、um, we also have the demo available for for you to play at TGS. Yeah, so you'll be able to ex experience like the basic game loop and like、um, have a look for yourself how beautiful it is. And if you come by and、um, try out the demo, we've got this mini badge for you. So you might have seen this badge、um, when we were talking about the physical versions before. So this is basically a mini version of that badge, and if you're interested in this,、um, definitely drop by our booth and give、uh, Signalis demo a go. Yeah, and if it catches your fancy, jump on the Steam page and put it on the wish list. And we've also got a comment from Rose Engine. Hello, this is Rose Engine, developer of Signalis. After nearly nine arduous years in development, Signalis will finally release this October. The two of us have sacrificed our health and sanity to bring our vision to life. So we hope that many players will enjoy the dreamlike experience of playing Signalis. Thanks to our partner Playsum, there will also be a physical. A beautiful physical release for Switch and PS4 that you can pre-order for some exclusive bonus items that we have designed especially for you. We hope that fellow fans of classic Japanese horror games will enjoy our survival horror game Signalis. Yeah, so if you're a fan of the survival horror genre. Yeah, this is one for you. You won't be disappointed. Yeah, like、um, through working with Rose Engine, like we we really feel that they care deeply about the game, and、um, like their main aim is just to make the best possible game for all the fans out there. So yep.、Yeah, so the release date is on October 27. And now on to our next title.
So this one's called Rose and Camellia. Yeah, so it's basically a story about a bride who marries into a wealthy family in the Taisho era, which is the period between 1912 and 1926. Like, it was originally a Flash game back in the heyday of Flash games, and it was super popular. So, it's also got a smartphone version as well, and now we're really excited to bring it to the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, and we're really happy to announce it here at the Playzum Game Show. <laughs> so, basically, it's, uh, it's a slapping battle. Basically, <laughs> yeah. So Yamien's played the um, smartphone version as well. So, and he found it very humorous and um, very simple yet fun. So this was um, this is a title developed by um, the developer of um, La Mulana, the La Mulana series. So yeah, and we're ha very happy to welcome Mr. Naramura the developer here in our studio as well. Yeah, and we've got, um, Mr. Naramura's got a Rose and Camellia t-shirt on as well. No, so unfortunately, um, this is not a novelty item, it's just something that um, the staff, the members of the development team have. <laughs> yeah, so Mr. Naramura always um, tries to wear his own t-shirts to um, shows so that he doesn't have to think about what to wear. <laughs> yeah, so can you tell us more about how development is coming along? Yeah, so initially after releasing the first um, smartphone version, we wanted to serialize it, but um, it was much harder than we thought. So, yeah, and looking at the Switch with the Joy-Cons, um, we figured that, yeah, maybe like this might be the perfect system for the game, so we decided to port it to Switch. Yeah, it's been a long road, but um, we're really happy to get something, get like a working demo ready for TGS. <laughs> yeah. On the smartphone version, you simply swipe on screen to slap your opponent, but um, this time we're going to use the um, take advantage of the switch so you can actually swing the Joy-Con to attack your opponent. Yep, Kirin's never played this game before. Yeah, <laughs> and it looks super interesting and, um, yeah, just getting excited looking at it. Yeah, so it's not often that you get to have the developer of a game in studio, so why don't we actually give the game a go right here? Yamien, how would you like to actually get some slapping action going? <laughs> yeah, so let's have Yamien actually try out the game. Yeah, so there you see, all you have to do is um, hold on to the one of the Joy-Cons of the Switch and you're set to go. So you realize that um, because it's, um, it takes place in the Taisho era, which is um, 1912 to 1926, so it's, uh, it uses very old Japanese, which gives it that extra little like flavor, a unique flavor. Yeah, so first of all, let's have a go at the tutorials. 
リータは家族の女性がお相手を許さないときにだけ許される由緒正しき競技でございます。競技なんだ。ちょっと存じ上げずすみません。ここで立ち直せていただきます。競技としてもうすでにここにあるものなので。So the tutorial will actually, um, yeah, it'll just bring you through how to work the, um, how the game system works and、uh, just some simple instructions on to get you ready to get into the real game. So it's not just about swinging the Joy-Con around.、Um, timing is also very important. So, yep, to, to slap your opponent, all you have to do is grab hold of the Joy-Con, hold down on the A button, and swing the swing the Joy-Con. So the harder you swing the Joy-Con, the stronger your slap will be. But make sure it doesn't fly out of your hands, though. You can also feint a slap just to get your opponent off his pace. And if your timing is right, you can also counter your opponent just before she slaps you. So now it's the opponent's turn to slap you, so you have to look at、um, their movements, hold down on the R trigger, and swing the Joy Con to avoid your opponent's slap. Oh, it looks like that's the end of the tutorial. Looks like we're going to be getting into it now. <laughs> so the, the dialogue in this game is also super interesting. Like,、um, it's got a humorous twist to it, so it's not all serious, like, as you can tell. So, not just The whole feel of the game, but like through the text, through the dialogue as well. Naramura, Mr. Naramura also shows his、um, humorous side to us. Yeah, so as mentioned before, it's the story about a bride who marries into a wealthy family, but、um, her husband passes away, and once he passed away, like she, the other female members of the family start s bullying her. But yeah, it's about her standing up to all of the other female members of the family. Ultimately, yeah, that leads to an all female slapping battle. Yup, there we go. Let's have a look. So, Yamien's turn to attack, and now it's his turn to defend. Yeah, there you go. Like,、um, you have to. Look carefully at your opponent's、um, actions. If you dodge at the, at the right time, you can counter. You can counter slap your opponent. There you can see、um, her opponent's、um, cheeks. Yeah, not in the best shape. Oh, there you go. And、um, if you counter. Consecutively, you can even grab onto your opponent and like consecutively slap her. <laughs> Yamien's really good at this game.
The next challenger appears. <笑>あの、静香さんの方が言ってることは正しい。この家すべての相続権は私にある so if as you can see like every opponent like um their actions are a little a little bit different so the timing to dodge and the timing to slap as well changes yeah but it looks like yami is really good at this game Oh, there you go. Yeah, so it looks like for the first two battles, if you counter your opponent twice in a row, you get to consecutively slap them, basically finishing, finishing them off. Yeah, so this is basically how the game goes from start to finish. Well, your opponents get um, stronger and stronger as the game gets deeper, but um, yeah, the bases are the same. <laughs> yeah, so this is an all female, like the character lineup for this game is all female. You won't see a single male character in the game. <laughs> Looks like your next opponent's got some Spider Man action going. Yeah, she was watching she was watching um proceedings from from the ceiling it seems. So that's a third battle. She looks stronger than the previous two. Like, judging by vi like looks only, like it seems like your opponent's much stronger than you, but hey, look, Yam Yen's got him. Got her, rather. Well, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, so um, we've got the Switch demo available for you to play at TGS as well. So if you like, if you like that, if you like what you saw, we'll be yeah, we'll be really happy to welcome you to our booth to try it out. Yeah, if you play too long, like you might get wrist pain for the next day. Yeah, if you want to tone your arms up, tone your arms up as well. This might be the game for you.
いやすごいあのー、これだけ見ていて触りたくなるゲームなかなかないんじゃないかなと思います。<笑>絶対楽しいですやっぱやってて。キリンさん。Yeah, even Miss Matsuzawa like just watching it, she's like she wants to try it for herself as well. Yeah, and Kirin feels the same way as well. Just watching it is yeah not enough. He wants to get into the act, in on the action as well. Yeah, while it, while it's, it hasn't made it into the TGS demo, um, we're planning to include a network versus mode in the final product as well. Yeah, so if you're able to play against a, another player, like that brings a whole new dimension to the game as well. Yeah, like in、um, a lot of Japanese dramas, when, when two female characters get into a fight, they slap each other one, one time each for some reason, and、um, that's sort of like what inspired this game as well, the system of this game. Yeah, so one of the aims、uh, Mr. Naramura had for this game is to sort of recreate the old、um, shonen type comics, the feel of the feel of like old shonen manga in this game. So I. I'd say he, he's done a pretty good job. Yeah, so there are four total scenarios. Yeah, and a lot of different characters that will appear in the game. So basically, what you see on screen at the moment, every character, apart from the main character, you'll probably get to、um, battle against them. Yeah, as mentioned earlier, we're going to have the Switch demo at our plays and booth at TGS 2022. So if you've got some steam to let off, drop by and get some slapping action on. Yeah, so actually playing the,、um, the smartphone version, swiping, just swiping on screen and actually comparing it to the Switch version where you actually get to sh the swing the Joy Con, like the level of satisfaction is just different. Yeah, so but make sure you put the strap on properly on your wrist. Yeah, it looks like what's that on his face? Yep, so that's a slap sticker that we'll be giving away at our booth for all of you who come by to try out the Rose and Camellia demo. Yeah, so it's a very versatile sticker. I can think of many ways, many different places you can use it. So, yeah, if you want to be a lucky recipient of that. Of that、um, sticker, we'll be waiting for you at our booth. Yeah, so, some closing thoughts from Mr. Naramura. Yeah, like、um, I feel kind of guilty to actually be here while the other de developers only have their comments read out. Yeah, so like、um, 
I really hope that many people will come stop by the Plays and Booth and try out Rose and Camellia. Like um, that, nothing would make me happier than that. And that's all from Rose and Camellia. Thank you very much for your time today, Mr. Na Mr. Naramura. And up next. So this is Valkyrie of Phantasm. Yeah, so this is the latest Toho project derivative work by um, developers Area Zero. Yeah, they're also the developers who uh, made um, Toho Sky Arena, for those of you who know. So it's got, it focuses on 3D action battle game uh, so it's a 3D action battle game, rather, with a particular focus on high-speed battles in, in mid-air. Yeah, so like it's, uh, as you can see in, in the footage behind you, like um, there's a lot of high-speed action going on in the air, so there, there are also like different spells and different abilities depending on which um, character that you choose. So it's got a really wide variety of attacks and yeah, and skills and spells as well. So this title will be releasing into early access on the 23rd of October. And uh, yeah, the, the developers plan to use player feedback to complete the game. So definitely check it out and um, if you've got any feedback as well we're, we're all really happy to have them yeah so for many Toho project um, works like a lot of it a lot of them focus on magic but this one looks kind of futuristic yeah, so for the early access version, like, you start with four playable characters, each with their different skills and abilities, and um, the developers will be adding more and more characters in subsequent updates. Yeah, if you come play the demo at TGS, you can control one of the four Initial, uh, initial characters and you can battle against the other three players as CPUs. We've also got an original clear folder for you if you come and try out the demo which Kirin has right now. Yeah, this is one that we've um, designed specifically for this event. Um, let's hear from the developers. 
We are Area Zero, a development team specializing in action fighting games. Currently, we're working on a game called Valkyrie of Phantasm, and our development concept for this project is super high speed bullet hell battle. We aim to create a game that's more satisfying than any of our other games with floaty yet speedy controls that lets players battle each other as they zoom and weave between a barrage of bullet hell attacks. From the beginning stages of development, we've directed our attention not how to make not to how not to how to make the character move fast, but how to make the experience feel fast and exhilarating. We've been working hard to implement camera work and give players a high speed experience without affecting the satisfying feel of combat, and we've been adjusting character motions and immobility frames down to the tenth of a second. Yes, yeah, so please look forward to the upcoming development and improvements on Valkyrie of Phantasm. So even among Toho Project games, like this one's got, this one's pretty high quality. So yeah, we would love to have you try out the demo just to get a taste of what it's like. So yep. Uh, releasing into early access on October 23rd. And up next, So this is Momodora Moonlit Farewell. Yes, so many of you may know the Momodora series, and this is the latest entry, which is also the fifth Momodora game of the series. Yes, so it's... Many claim the Momodora series to be... to have caused, like, the start of the Metroidvania boom. And this follows on from the fourth Momodora game, which is um, titled Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight. Yeah, so it's got um, amazing action gameplay and also like beautiful animation as well. Yeah, so visually and like um, in terms of gameplay, like it just feels great and plays great. Yeah, so the previous game, Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight, actually happens before, the, before Momodora 1, 2, and 3. And now for the fifth game, which is this one, Momodora Moonlit Farewell, that's the um, game that tells the story after Momodora 3. Yeah, if you're a Momodora fan, this is definitely one we want you to come and experience for yourself at TGS. So yeah, we're having the world's first playable demo of Momodora Moonlight Fa Moonlit Farewell at our booth at TGS. And as you can see, um, there's a special sticker sheet that we have for you. And um, yeah, if this is something that you'd like to have, definitely come by. 
come by our booth, say hi, and play the demo. Yeah, Kirin's, Kirin's familiar with the um, series. And yeah, he's a big fan. Whoop, looks like he's having a bit of trouble holding up the sticker sheet. Yeah, Yamien's never actually played um, any game of this, like any of the games, but um, he is aware of it, like, and he does know that it's a very, very, very famous series. Yeah, so like um, at the beginning, like at the initial stages of the Metroidvania genre was when um, Momodora first came onto the scene as well, and since then, it's just been like, um, it's just gathered a, a big following. Yeah, even though it's um, the latest installment of the series, um, the developers have made, um, have created, written the story rather in a way that um, you don't need to know the previous story to enjoy this one. But of course, if you know what happens in um, Momodora's 1 to 4, that'll be even better. So if you haven't tried out the series before, well, this is your chance. <laughs> yeah, we actually um, introduced Momodora Moonlit Farewell in our Playzum game show back in January. But to our surprise, like some viewers didn't know about the series. So if you don't know about the series, um, definitely play Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight, which is the previous game. Like, I, pro I promise you, like, you won't, you won't regret it. Yep, yeah, Kirin's back. So here's another look at the sticker that you can receive at TGS, at the Plays and booth at TGS. Yeah, so this will be the world's first playable demo. And let's hear from the developer. Hello everyone, Ardeen here. We're showcasing a demo of the latest installment of the Momodora series here at TGS. If you're around, please come play our game. We're thrilled to be part of the TGS lineup, and we hope you will enjoy the, the experience. So that's all for Momodora Moonlit Farewell. And moving on to the next title, let's have a look. And there, here we have Drainus. 
Yes, so this is um, a game by Team Ladybug. You might know them for their work behind um, Toho Luna Nights or Record of Lotus War, Deedlit, and Wonder Labyrinth. So this is a 2D shooting game. And uh, we released the Steam version back in May this year. And um, it was very well received. So this time we're trying to be, we're, we're going to bring it to the Switch. Yeah, for fans of the genre, like um, looking at this uh, game, you might think that it just looks like uh, a usual, like a classic 2D shooter, but actually it's got a lot of new and fresh elements in it. So we look at it as sort of like an, an evolution of the genre that brings it sort of like into the modern era, if you like. Yeah, so it's coming to Switch. Um, for fans of the genre, definitely check it out. And um, if you're new to the genre, like it's designed for casual gamers to be to be enjoyable for casual gamers as well. So, yeah, this might be the one who that gets you hooked on the genre. So for Yamien, he's played similar games before. So yeah. It, it looks it looks like something that he will enjoy. <laughs> yeah, so Kirin's also a big fan of this genre, so like yeah. Shooting games equals Kirin. <laughs> looks like he he just forgot what he was about to say. Yeah, looking at the looking at the trailer, like not only is it visually fantastic, but the but the soundtrack is also amazing. Yeah, if you come try out the Switch demo at our TGS booth, you also receive this um, really cool acrylic keychain. So it's a double-sided keychain. So you have the top of the drainus, which is the fighter jet that you'll be piloting. And if you flip it over, you'll see the bottom of it as well. Yeah, so that's the top of the drainus. And um, yeah, if, if Kirin can manage to flip it around, we can see the back as well. Yeah, so unfortunately, we can't see the back, so hey. Why don't you come by, um, get it for yourself, and have a look at the back yourself. So yeah, so you'll be able to play the first 15 minutes of the of the demo of the game. Yeah, so like in our experience, a lot of players who were not that well versed in shooting games, they tend to avoid the genre because it's too hard. But this one's actually designed in a way that can be um, enjoyed by casual gamers um, anywhere. So if, even if you're a casual gamer or a seasoned veteran of the genre, well, this one's for you. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a 2D shooter with a lot of new and fresh elements. Yep, and dev comment for you. Thank you for all the requests for a Switch port of Drainus. It's currently in development, so please look forward to the official release. Drainus may look like an old school shooter, but it's full of fun and brand new elements that give it a, give it a unique feel. I hope many more people can enjoy the game once it's released on the Switch. Yeah, so this is a game by Team Ladybug, and if you've played any of their previous games before, you'll know that quality is a given. So that's Drainus. Yep, so moving on to our final title.
So for the ninth and final title you can see at Plaisum's booth, we've got Ib. Yeah, so it's a game by a devel developer called Cordy. Uh, it's a remake of her horror game that's um, of the same title that was initially released as a free game 10 years ago. We released uh, the remake on Steam back in April, but now we're also porting it to the Switch. So it takes place in an art museum with well thought out puzzles based on the works of an artist called Guerterna. Yeah, so and the characters and their stories are also major highlights. So we've got the pr protagonist, Ib, and Gary and Mary, wh whom she meets in the game. Yeah, the original was and still is an incredibly popular free game. You, many of, many of um, gaming fans um, call it the cream of the crop among free horror games. Yeah, so um, it's currently scheduled for a Switch release this winter. And to commemorate the Switch version, we've got two special campaigns for you. One is a Pixiv art contest with up to 500, with a total of 500,000 Japanese yen in cash prizes up, up for grabs. So that's a total cash prize worth 500,000 yen. Yeah, so um, we're looking, we're really looking forward to all of your amazing creative work. And another one is a voting site for Guaterna artwork. Yeah, so in the game, you'll come across like a lot of artwork from this artist called Weiss Guertena. So we thought, you know, let's set up a website where you can vote for your favorite piece of Guertena work. Yeah, so like, um, if you're a fan of if you're a fan of it, definitely jump on and vote for your favorite pieces of work. Yes, yeah, so Kirin's played the, um, I guess, the Steam version already, and um, it seemed like he had quite a bit of trouble with the puzzles. Yeah, so even though it was quite difficult for him, he found it very interesting, very engaging. And what's that you've got right there? Yes. So yeah, we have the Switch demo available for, pl for you to play. So come by the Plays and Booth, play the demo, and you'll be a recipient to that cute little postcard over there. <laughs> yeah, so Yamien's also a big fan of the, of the game. So yeah, don't miss out on this opportunity to actually get your hands and experience the game. And now let's hear from Cory. Hello, I'm very happy that my game will be ported to consoles. It's all thanks to the fans who support me. I hope even people who didn't know it or couldn't play the game because they didn't have a computer can also now try out the game. Well then, I'll be waiting for you at the Guatena exhibition. Oh, so Miss Matsuzawa actually has purchased the game, but she hasn't had time to actually play it yet. So that's all for Ib. And now, now that we've um, displayed our nine titles, what, what do you guys all think? We're very excited for you guys to play them at TGS. So now we would like to show off this year's Plays and Booth at TGS. 
It is located in hall 1C03. So can you please tell us more about the booth, Ms. Tani? So we've wanted to make the games the central part of, of our booth. <laughs> so there's unfortunately only games for everyone to enjoy. No, nothing else. But we're very excited for you all to enjoy these nine titles. So that is our utmost priority is to just be able to allow all of the um, participants of TGS to be able to play these titles. We've received some complaints in the past regarding uh, the amount of, of PCs and or the amount of games, but you know, we would still like to present you all with, with spectacular games. And we're still very proud of our lineup this year. So there will most likely be a, a waiting line at the entrance, so please line up there to try out these games. <laughs> so how will these games work? So basically, you will have 15 minutes to try out these demos, and depending on whether you you fail or you die or, you know, but at the at utmost, you will have 15 minutes to be able to play these games. And don't forget, all the recipients uh, will be able to receive uh, these wonderful novelties. Um, Now also don't forget, uh, if you use the hashtag playism underscore 10m, that's playism underscore 10m, you'll also be um, in the running to win a uh, pack of playism's titles. And now we'd like to talk about our partner here at TGS, it is Mouse Computers. So please let me introduce Mouse Computers. Mouse Computer Corporation is a computer manufacturer that produces and sells built-to-order computers. Ever since its launch in 2004, the gaming PC brand G-Tune has received support from top-class professional esports players and streamers of all genres. G-Tune products feature cases that take gamers' suggestions into consideration, providing many choices ranging from entry-level models for people who want a low-cost gaming PC to jump right into the hobby, to high-end models that allow for high-quality graphics for enhanced gameplay and live streaming experiences resulting in a wide variety of products from which anyone can find a PC that fits their needs perfectly. Oh, Matsuzawa-san also uses a G-Tune computer. It's a, it's a computer that was recommended by her friend. She says G-Tune computers are very well made and are very good. So she highly recommends them. So Mouse Computers are proud sponsors of Playism's booth, and you'll be able to play on them if you participate. And now we'd like to talk about the sales. To celebrate Tokyo Game Show, we are now holding a variety of sales on every platform for a wide variety of titles. On Steam, it's now until September 18th. On Nintendo Switch, it's until the September 28th. PlayStation Store, it's Asian Japan only until September 28th. And on Xbox, it is until September 19th. So please feel free to enjoy over 100 titles on all of these platforms at uh, with discounts of up to 80% off. So please purchase as much games as you can as we'd like to, to get to 20 million. 
to wish list these upcoming games as we gear, we, as we gear towards the game's release? So out of these titles, we'd like to showcase five of them. So first off, here we go with Idol Manager. Ripped poster design was very creative and it was trending online. And now Idol Manager on ever been at 30% off. So please take this opportunity if you haven't already to buy the game and enjoy Idol Manager. So a lot of the content creators and live streamers have attempted to stream Idol Manager, but they found it rather tricky. But still, the concept of the game is very interesting, and to be able to run your own um, idol group is very interesting, and it's a very fun concept. So Matsuzawa and Yamien would like to run their own idol group and, and be able to talk to each other about it. And now Idol Manager has a new update in the works. So we'd like to give you a little tease of this update with this artwork. We currently don't have uh, much more to say about it, but we would like to share with you this artwork as kind of a, as kind of a tease. Wonder what kind of update will come from, will come next. Yep, so Kitty has also played Idol Manager. He finds it very difficult. <laughs> so running an auto manager is, is harder than it seems and, and Kirin found it really difficult. So we hope to we hope that we ma he masters it and he, he'll be able to share with us his tips and tricks. So what kind of members did you did you assemble? So at first he, he held auditions and he had two, three, four members join. But then he thought, you know, can I can I hire more or So there's a lot of different ways to, to play Idol Manager and to run your group. So it's really exciting to see um, everybody's way of management. Now our next title is La Mulana 2. That's on sale now for Nintendo Switch and Xbox One. La Mulana 2 was created by Mr. Nalamura, uh, who made Rose and Camellia. So now for Japan only, uh, users will be able to enjoy Tower of Awareness, the new update here on consoles. The West will be getting this update in the future as well, so rest, be rest assured. So please, um, Narama-san, uh, please introduce uh, Lamalana too. Thank you for waiting. I can't really say please enjoy this new update as it's in incredibly difficult so maybe please enjoy the suffering is, is a better term. So if you have a save data, um, it might be easier to enjoy this new update. Mm -hmm. 
DLC 買ったら追加ダンジョンすぐ遊べるっていうのが普通なんですけど、うん、うちの DLC は見つけるまでが数日かかるっていうそうなんですよね<笑>ワンネスの塔がどこにあるかがまずわからないそうでしたねそこもまた一つの探検要素ではあるみたいな感じある<笑>そういうのが好きな人がうちのファンなんで、うんうんうん、ちょっと外せないというか、うん、なるほどなるほど、ね、じゃあぜひモサの皆さんもねこちら楽しんでいただいて So please try to enjoy La Mulana 2's new update. So, Kirin, what do you think? La Mulana is incredibly difficult. But I still love La Mulana. So from the start, you know, it doesn't go, it doesn't, you know, start off easy. From the get-go, it's already very difficult. Ms. Tani, you also express some, some disgust sometimes when you were playing the game. You really, you really feel demotivated after, after dying a lot and after failing and losing a lot. But it's still an incredible game. But once you are able to clear and, and beat the game, the sense of, of um, achievement is, is incredible. <laughs> So please enjoy the suffering that comes with La Mulana 2. And up next is The Use of Life. The title is currently on Steam as Early Access, and for the first time, players can pick this title up at 20% off. So in the Early Access version, it goes up to Chapter 2, but developers are hard at work on the next chapter, Chapter 3. So while we wait for chapter three, please take this opportunity to pick up the use of life. It's in the style of like a visual novel, but it's an RPG. So it's, it's a very different take on a typical RPG. Yep, so finding out the use of, of life is the main goal of this game. So that is something that we want you to discover. And up next is The Good Life. The Good Life is on sale currently on Nintendo eShop, PlayStation Store, and Microsoft Store. So The Good Life, um, the new, a new DLC is with additional quests is also in the works. So w within a village, um, there are times where a mysterious murder or a mysterious case will come up, and it's your job to, to solve it. So this DLC's goal is to try to get you immersed into the good life and the village that you are currently living in, <laughs> even though there are murders. So on the surface, it may look like a peaceful and lovely village, but there are still scary cases that occur. Mm. It's, it's hard to put into words. So it's an adventure game that was made by Sweary, who also made Deadly Premonition. Kirin, what do you think? So it feels, this game feels like an open world title. Mm. 
but it's also has it's also full of adventure and, and quests and mysteries. I still have yet to play this game, however. Wow, we're surprised that there's a game that Kitty hasn't enjoyed yet. So please enjoy the good life. Now our final our final game that we'd like to introduce is Fight Crab. And right now, Fight Crab is on Steam and is currently half off. So, to explain what Fight Crab is, it's a game where crabs fight. So in this new update that will be added, um, it, it comes with a new skill called Crab Alchemy that allows your crab to create weapons. And we've received word from the developer that this update is progressing very well. Kiri, what do you think? I have experienced this game and I've, I've played it. Mm, yeah, I, w I would like to enjoy creating new weapons and, and enjoying Fight Crab again. <laughs> yep, so Yami and, and Kirin, please, please enjoy the Fight Crab. And for those of you who are interested in Fight Crab, it is now 50% off, so please don't forget to take this opportunity and get Fight Crab. Now, it's almost time to wrap up the Playism Game Show TGS 2022 preview, but Playism would like to make exciting announcements. Ms. Tani, please. Now, we are happy to announce job opportunities for indie game content creators. We are looking for a new type of indie game producer who will explore new ways to share spectacular indie games to the world. Applicants must have an indie game live streaming channel. Please check out the official Playism website for more details. And thank you very much Yami and Kirin for your support as well. And we felt that indie games and you know, content creators and live streamers have always you know, blended well together and we'd like to find a way to really cement this, this bond. And so we want to ask you all uh, what you guys think. Now we currently are still working out the finer details, but we would like to hear from you, indie game fans, about your interest in the indie games and what you would like to see us do or try. <laughs> so please contact us if you have any, have any thoughts for us. So is it okay if, if you know, Yamien joins? Oh, okay, we'll talk, we'll talk later, we'll talk, we'll talk later. Oh, Kirin, you have your hand raised? Oh. So Kirin is, is well versed in the, in the world of live streaming and content creation. <laughs> Out of our, um, our years at Playism, we've really, you know, relied on Kirin and we've, we've worked with him for a very long time. So from a content creator's uh, point of view, It, it, we really feel like you know this is a great opportunity to to share our voice and to share our opinions. Mm. 
So there's a lot of different point of views, particularly you know from content creators' point of view or from a viewer's point of view. <laughs> So you don't have to necessarily, you know, have all these thoughts with you um, from the get-go. You can, you know, share with us some ideas that you may currently have, or, you know, we'll be open to some light discussions as well. Uh, yes, there is also one more announcement that we'd like to make. Uh, in addition to content creators, we are also seeking new additions to the Playism team. We are looking for a wide range of staff from indie game fans to indie game developers. We would love to meet those uh, who can help us deliver the best indie games to the world. No academic or work experience is required. If you're interested in this position, please feel free to apply. And please check the official Playism website for more details. We are really, we're kind of short staffed and we love to meet you know, new team, potential team members. <laughs> and, you know, I, you know, Mizutani has thought, you know, how can we do all these things? How can we um, excel? One of the things, one of the aspects I realize is we're short, we're short staffed. So for those of you watching the channel and, you know, might feel like you, you'd be able to help Playism, we'd really appreciate it if you applied. What kind of job positions are available? So, well, for one, it's, there's producers position, there's translators, uh, back-end staff, programmers. So pretty much those of you who can help us deliver uh, fantastic indie games. So if you are, you know, interested or your you, your hobby is translating or marketing or anything like that and you you feel like you'd be able to help Playism, oh, we really welcome that as well. For those with a burning passion to to deliver, you know, great indie games, you know, all all are welcome in that department. And that is the end of Playism Playism's announcements. Now we'd like to wrap up and ask our speakers on their closing thoughts. So for TGS, it's been three years since the last um, TGS. So there, there are probably a lot of a lot of participants, you know, f going to TGS for the first time, and we would love for them to enjoy the plays and booth and everything that we have prepared. And what about you, Kirin? Oh, I feel like I did all right today. Uh, I particularly enjoyed the sales announcement as you know I've heard a lot of titles go on sale and it I really want to buy as much titles as I can <laughs> you're really taking this as a, as a viewers point of view but we really appreciate um, the passion that you have and you know please definitely buy some of our games And now we'd like to ask Naramura-san for his opinions. <laughs> yep, I've, I've still been here. I've been here all along. Now, out, of, out of all of the titles that were announced, uh, you know, I've, I've found a lot of them. Um, I've, I've, I've become a fan of a lot of them.
なんかすごく見て非なるというかすごくやっぱり尖ったあの作品をね、はい、開発され続けているんだなっていうのを、はい、実感しまして<笑>ありがとうございます尖った体操をずっと神妙な顔をしてて<笑>、はい、You always kept a serious face throughout the PGS Now, lastly, Mizutani. So I've been you know, hosting PGS for a long time along with Matsuzawa and, and Kirin. But tomorrow, to be able to say that TGS is starting is incredible. Now, given the current COVID conditions, you know, it's hard to say how the event will turn out and how different it will be, but we would really love to share these titles with you all. Even if you're not joining us uh, for the TGS event, we'd love to be able to share, you, share with you all um, games that are on sale as well. So to all the viewers who are watching today, you know, if you found any games that are interesting, um, please feel free to pick them up. And for those of you who can join us at TGS, we'll be waiting for your arrival. Sorry, um, Rose and Camellia. Uh, yeah, I accidentally said it came out in October, but uh, the release date is still TBA. Thank you very much for watching up until this point. And uh, to reiterate, Tokyo Game Show 2022 uh, will begin on the 16th at 2 p.m., um, but full days on the 17th and the 18th. So please come to Playism's booth and Hall 1, CO3. We'd now like to conclude Playism Game Show TGS 2022, and thank you for watching.